Here are ten points representing crocodiles and snakes. Abscissor X1 is body length, and the alternate X2 is body weight. Five yellow circles represent five species of crocodile data, and the five blue triangles represent five species of snakes. For example, reticulated python is 659 centimeters long and weighs 59 kilograms. Its position is right here. All we have to do is to draw a line to separate crocodiles from snakes. From the same body length, crocodiles are much heavier than snakes, so we can easily draw a line to separate them. It's easy, right? We can also define this line with the equation. These three parameters are W1, W2, and B. Now, I can add and subtract these three parameters to separate the crocodiles from the snakes. Probably, you may guess what role W and B play respectively. W changes the slope, and B changes the position. But that's not the point. The point is that we have to let our machine automatically adjust these three parameters to separate the crocodiles from the snakes. Wait a minute. What does this have to do with our artificial intelligence? Yes, it has a bearing on AI. The essence of this problem is classification. Classification is actually the source of intelligence. To understand what intelligence is all about, we made a model of our brain based on the large number of magnetic resonance images. The marvelous thing about this brain model is that we can see what it looks like after it is cut open, no matter which direction we look at it. If we cut from left to right. Stop. Now we can see that our brain is mainly made up of two substances: green matter and white matter. Green matter is mainly neural settings and dendrites, while white matter is mainly millions of long actions, which are surrounded by myelin, the white layers, so they look whiter. These white cables connect green matter from different brain regions. To transmit electrical signals, if we zoom in here, we can see the source of our intelligence, neurons. In our brain, there are about 85 billions of these neurons. You can think of this gadget as a logic switch. It can receive signals from multiple upstream cells. Some of them are simulating signals, and some are suppressing signals. When the sum of signals received by a neuron reaches a certain threshold, the neuron is activated, fired. Through the axon, the signals are transmitted to the next neuron. So, for the output of single neuron, there are only two states: activated or inactivated. This is the source of our intelligence. For example, this neuron. Has two dendritic signals x1 and x2. Different dendrites have different degrees of importance. We can express them in terms of weight w1 and w2. After all the dendritic signals are added, if it is less than the threshold b, the neuron will be activated. Suppose that by default. The input signals x1 and x2 are both ten. The weights w1 and w2 are both one, and b is 100. This moment, it does not reach the threshold b. The neuron is not activated. If the input dendritic signals x1 and x2 become larger, or the dendritic weights w1 and w2 become larger. Then the input signal can be greater than the threshold B value 100, allowing neurons to be activated. We can make the input signal f x 
equals x1 times w1 plus x2 times w2. When fx is greater than b, neurons are activated. Let's define the output y as 1. If fx is less than or equal to b, then the neuron will not be activated and the output y is 0. If there are dendrites, then fx equals sigma wi times xi. Sigma is the summation symbol, which means multiplying all the wi and xi and then adding them. In any case, as long as fx is greater than b, the neuron will activate it and y equals 1. Suppose we now have four dendrites. These are the value of four w and b's. I can adjust the weights of these four dendrites to activate the neurons. Please remember this model, input x, with w, judge threshold b, output y. Neural networks can recognize images and languages. They look complex, but in fact, they're all built by one small neural model after another. But we just let them start learning. The process is simple. Input features, recognize features, output results. Judge whether it is right or wrong. Now let's see how this model automatically classifies crocodiles and snakes. The input features are the length x1 and body weight x2 of the animal. Recognized feature is to put the x1 and x2 of each point into this input formula. At this time, the input signal formula is fx equals w1 times x1 plus w2 times x2. If fx is greater than b, the output y is 1. If fx is less than b, y is 0. If we respectively set the initial value of w1, w2, and b to negative 1, 0, and negative 200, we can get the output of each point in the coordinate system. We mark the doors that are greater than b as yellow, and those are less than b as blue. There's a lie appears. This is the speed line equation, fx minus b equals zero. That was see in the beginning of the video. If I change w or b, the position of lie will also change. But this lie is not important. The lie is just a visual aid for you, not for the machine. Our machine can't read the line, and it doesn't know that the yellow is crocodile's area and the blue is snake area. But by calculating each point, the machine can know that the six points are wrong. Why? This is the core part of getting neuron to start learning. Judging right or wrong. The result we output is low case y. In order to determine whether the low case y is right or wrong, we need to artificially set an uppercase y. The correct answer, our goal. The crocodile is wrong and the snake is zero. The classification is correct only if the output value matches the target value, both zero, zero, or both one, one. If there is inconsistency between them, then it is wrong. Okay, here is the point. How can we get a machine to adjust this line correctly? Don't think of yourself as a human. Think about yourself as a machine. If you were a machine, you would know why the six points were wrong at the time. You can only put one point into the model to see if they're right, and then correct them one by one. For example, let's put the length and the weight of number one American alligator into the current model. 
and the result is negative 340. fx is less than negative 200, the threshold b. So it can't be activated. Output 0 is judged as a snake. Classification error. The solution of the machine is also simple. By directly adjusting the values of W1 and W2 in the formula, American alligator's length x1 and weight x2 can be inputted higher and higher into the sensor until the perceptron is activated and the output lowercase y is 1, which is the consistent with the target result uppercase y. So let's start now. This manual adjustment feels troublesome, but this is how the machine learns. It can only judge and adjust one point at a time. If I want to improve efficiency, I can narrow the neural network structure on the left and look at the dividing line on the right. Take the split line as the target to adjust the weight. I finished training them patiently and successfully simulated machine learning just now. It seems that as long as we iterate through W1 and W2 one point at a time, we will get closer and closer to the correct parameters until the complete classification is successful. If we use mathematical language to express what just happened, it is wi t plus 1 equals wi t plus data wi. So as long as we set a reliable data wi calculation method, we can make the machine adjust itself round by round until the classification is complete. Assuming that data wi is a fixed value less than 0 0.1, then after three iterations, w14 equals negative 0 0.7, w24 equals 0 0.3. The number one American alligator was successfully classified, but after that, by all possible means, it cannot correctly adjust the parameters of number 2, Eastern Diamondback Rattlesnake. So it is obvious that data wi should be an expression made up of multiple parameters allowing w to keep adjusting in the right direction. Well, the core and most interesting part is finally here. What exactly should data wi do? Let's try to derive data WI's formula. Let's review the machine learning process again. Input features, recognize features, output result, judge whether it's right or wrong. The key is judgment. We have to let the machine know when did I get wrong. So you can think about what parameters can determine whether the machine has classified it correctly. Go Y and output Y and key to solve the problem. Of course, we still need the help of X. Now, my device is iterating through W1 and W2 according to the data WI formula I wrote. But it still doesn't seem to work because it is only 50% accurate. Let's change the formula and continue debugging. It does seem a little difficult here. But it only uses simple addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. The key is to understand how data M works. There are only two weights, W1 and W2. Data WI actually corresponds to the data W1 and data W2. That is, how much W1 and W2 have to change each time. Suppose data w1 equals 1. When a new sample comes over, data w1 will be added to w1 every time. For example, if the initial value of w1 0 equals negative 1, the weight will be adjusted according to this formula, the new w1, that is, 
W one one equals W one zero plus delta W I equals negative one plus one equals zero. After that, our machine substitutes the next sample into the split line and calculates the new W12 equals W11 plus data WI equals 0 plus 1 equals 1, and so on. Each time a new sample is introduced, the machine will change the weight according to this formula. Then keep calculating W13, W14, W15, etc. The values in parentheses represent the numbers of weight changes. Each time a new sample comes over, the weight changes. The same is true for W2, which will be adjusted according to this method with W1 at the same time. Of course, OD plus 1 is obviously not classified correctly, because it only adjusts the weight in the wrong direction. Therefore, the key is to let the data WI adjust W1 and W2 in the right direction. If W is small, adjust it to the positive direction. If W is larger, adjust it to the negative. So the correct answer is data WI equals uppercase Y minus lowercase Y times XI. Well done. <laughs> What we have just developed is a simple machine learning model. This model cannot only successfully classify crocodiles and snakes, but also recognize numbers. The key to making the machine adjust automatically is to let the machine know whether W is high or low, uppercase Y and lowercase Y are just enough to solve this problem. Uppercase Y is a real value and lowercase y is an output value. If uppercase y is the same as the lowercase y, then uppercase y minus lowercase y equals zero. Delta w equals zero. At this point, wi does not need to be adjusted. If uppercase y minus the lowercase y is not zero, then there are only two results. One minus zero equals one, or 0 minus 1 equals negative 1. If the result is wrong, it means that the previous w is too low. In order to make fx greater than b, we need to increase w. So the data w must be a positive number at this time. On the other hand, if it is negative 1, it means that the previous w is too high. Then we need to lower it so that fx less than b. So the data W must be negative at this time. The reason we want to multiply the xi is that the greater the x at this point, the greater the impact on the entire fx, and the adjustment of W should also be larger. At the real case, B will also be adjusted according to the same rule. Data B equals uppercase Y minus lowercase Y times 1. Now, let me adjust the initial values of W1, W2, and B, and let the machine calculate automatically. We find that no matter what initial parameters we set, our machine can always complete the classification automatically. Finally, data W and data B are usually multiplied by another R. We will continue to the plot later in the story. The model we used to train our machine to recognize numbers in the last episode used this simple algorithm. As long as our machine judgment is wrong, the 784 weights will be automatically adjusted plus a data WI. As the number of iteration increases, the machine's recognition of number will become more and more accurate. As early as 1957, Frank Rosenblatt invented this kind of perceptron. 
by constantly adjust the values of the weights W and by term B. Let the linear function fx <coughs> equals wx plus b. It successfully divides the low data into two categories. But this perceptual model has a fatal flaw. A lot of data simply cannot be separated by a straight line, a plane, or a hyperplane. For example, if we take a crocodile that is 500 centimeters long, and weighs 50 kilograms as a sample. No matter how much the sensor is adjusted, it will not be successful. To solve this problem, let's start by separating these four points. That's what we are going to talking about in the next episode.